ਦੇ Welcome to this episode of our program, Daily Debate. As usual, we will be discussing important uh, topics uh, on our episode today. We'll be focusing on two important uh, topics, but the two, or both of them, are speaking about one important uh, uh, issue, which is the climate change action. And the first one will be speaking about uh, Prime Minister Dr. Madbouli, who is in Sharm Sheikh, uh, to attend uh, the uh, Islamic Development Bank uh, Devel uh, development Bank uh, meeting, which is taking place in Sharm el-Sheikh. Egypt is hosting this important uh, meeting for the first time in 30 years. Uh, Egypt is one of the, uh, the uh, residents of, uh, or the premises of the uh, ISDB, or the Islamic Development Bank, in uh, 57 of the uh, uh, member states of this uh, group. Uh, Egypt also is uh, uh, an important uh, member state where it holds about 7.7 percent of the shares of uh, the bank. Today the uh, Prime Minister has uh, addressed this important uh, gathering, uh, the meeting of the Islamic Development Bank that is being held under the auspices of President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi from the 1st till the 4th of June under the slogan of after recovery from the pandemic resilience and sustainability. In his speech, the Premier said that the meeting comes as the world is witnessing a complicated international economic crisis in addition to environmental challenges with its bordering effects on agricultural fields. He stressed the significance of diversifying financial sources. Medbouli also reviewed Egypt's experience to confront the coronavirus pandemic and the international uh, crises, including the latest Ukrainian crisis, reiterating that the government was keen to achieve a balance between citizens, health, and maintaining the economy through pushing forward the wheel of development. The Prime Minister also noted that the state would continue supporting the private sector and concentrating on the green growth. That is very much would be our first uh, topic. Our second topic would be uh, Foreign Minister Samah Shukri uh, was in Sweden to uh, attend the sixth ministerial meeting on climate action where he spoke about Egypt's vision for COP27 in, uh, uh, in this uh, gathering and also urged uh, for an urgent action to uh, implement climate pledges. We'll be speaking about those two topics in our uh, in our episode tonight. Before we delve into our discussion, let me first have the top story of the day. And uh, as the Prime Minister was in Sharm el-Sheikh to attend this important meeting, uh, and uh, uh, during the day, the Prime Minister, uh, accompanied by a number of ministers and high-ranking officials, inspected work of the implementation process of the electric bus charging stations during his tour. Uh, this at the Red Sea Resort of Sharm el-Sheikh, Transportation Minister General Kamil El-Wazir explained the developments in the implementation process of the project which is under construction as part of the government's plan to transform the whole city into green energy in preparation for hosting the 27th session of the conference of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change Parties, COP27, that will be hosted by Egypt in November in Sharm Sheikh. He stressed, rather General uh, Wazir, uh, stressed that the station comes within the framework of the program to install a number of electric charging 
uh, stations to serve a network of electric buses that will be used during the COP27 conference and after. The Prime Minister was also briefed about the station which is built over an area of 100,000 square meters and accommodate 140 electric buses that is in addition to providing them with all needed services. The Prime Minister was also briefed on the gas station in Naqb which is being built on a three meters and is dedicated for serving 120 bus that will also be used during the conference and present all the relevant services. General Wazir said that the work is ongoing 24-7 to be finished as scheduled before the conference. Back to our first uh, segment and our uh, first uh, topic, the Prime Minister and his meeting for, uh, or Egypt hosting the uh, Islamic Development Bank for the first time in 30 years. Let me first welcome our dear guest, Dr. Sharif Amir, Professor of International Relations. Thank you so much for being with Thank us. You. Thank you. And, uh, um, we have followed up uh, minutes ago the um, press conference of the Prime Minister just ended with him urging for pressing issues and presenting how Egypt has dealt with uh, crises, including of course the pandemic as, uh, as well as many others, of course the Russian and Ukraine crisis. Um, first, let me take your reading towards how Egypt uh, has been dealing with crises over the past uh, stage? Well, um, we are part of the international community, so what, uh, what affects the whole world affects Egypt also. And uh, what makes it more difficult is that we are in the Middle East also, and this is a very volatile region. So uh, we had many obstacles, but fortunately, um, when we went through many difficulties back in 11 years ago during the, um, what was called the Arab Spring, we were prepared in a way or another to how to face crises, how to act and to react. And I think that uh, the government uh, was able to take the appropriate steps um, to ensure that the internal front, I mean the people, will be always feeling security and feeling unharmed from what, whatever happens in the outside world. And also that we will show the world that we are capable of coping with all these crises as everyone have mm -hmm. done. Mm -hmm. um, what was amazing is that we have seen many economies around us uh, and even in Europe were harmed. Uh, we were uh, we were the, the 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 most fortunate because we ca we were capable of sustaining our uh, development projects and we were trying to go on uh, as long as it uh, is it possible and as many commentators said and uh, what's what's really um, uh, what makes Egypt this uh, this strong is that we are, w w all the obstacles that we had, th main, three main obstacles were outside of our hands. Terrorism and the COVID-19 pandemic and uh, the, the Russian-Ukrainian uh, crisis now. So all these big problems are not our responsibility and we were affected. But not, nevertheless, we were capable of showing the world we are capable of acting, we are capable of protecting our interests. Let, let, let me give you an example, which, which was an accident and it was a test for Egypt. Mm. Uh, it was the evergreen that uh, blocked the Suez Canal. It was out of our hands. We were not responsible for it, but we showed the world how we managed this crisis. This is a tiny example of how this government is working. It's working around the clock to find solutions we are prepared for all of them, um, but let's say once again we are part of this, this world, of course we are all affected, but we are transmitting the message 
And what, this is what the Prime Minister was giving as a message, that Egypt is capable of being a strong country dealing with crisis. And this is how we show the world that we are uh, a strong citadel of diplomacy and also military power. We are resilient. Of course. Definitely. <laughs> the slogan of this uh, meetings or, or, or of these meetings is recovery from pandemic, resilience mm. and sustainability. And this is what we have been working mm. on. Um, let me say here that this is the first time mm. that in 30 years that Egypt hosts an important meeting for the Islamic Development mm. uh, Bank Group. Mm. Uh, it is a big institution that comprises around 57 mm. uh, member states. Mm. Uh, and uh, it is big enough to deal with many pressing issues and that would be, uh, uh, was one of the issues that were submitted. From uh, your point of view first, let me take your reading into Egypt hosting this important gathering for the first time in 30 years and what does this illustrate? It illustrates that we are uh, gaining again our position uh, in the Islamic world and also in the international community. Uh, it means that we are uh, also um, having a promising economy. So that's why they have chosen Egypt, because we all know uh, these members, um, over than 57 members, they choose uh, the country so this was an honor for us it's a sign that everyone said well Egypt is a promising uh, economy so we have to uh, ensure that we are uh, led now by a country who has this uh, energy uh, we all know also that Egypt is trying to maintain the, the, the relations with every country on the same level as, no, as, as we, we can. We are not trying to be biased by any means. We are trying to have uh, good relations with uh, Africa, Asia, Europe, uh, Russia, the United States. We are doing this in a very, very clear level. And let's not forget that we have helped some Islamic countries and Arab countries from, from the total downfall, like in Libya. Now we are, we are starting the investment there. Egypt is the leader there. Other countries destroy this country. We are building this country. We are working on that indeed. Yes. So we are showing the world that we have worked like that. We, we have helped countries like Lebanon after the disaster that happened at the, the port. We are, we are helping Iraq in the electricity. We are helping Jordan in this cooperation. We are working also uh, with Sudan and even uh, the big issue of the Renaissance Dam. We have shown that we are helping everyone there. We are helping all the African countries. So Egypt is a leader now. And that's the message that I think that the, these countries got. That Egypt is the hub now in the Middle East. It's the country who attracts the investment and the country attracts uh, mediation for crisis. Uh, President Sisi uh, mediated in several issues and managed to solve the problems in South Sudan, in, in Libya, in, in everywhere. So it's the leadership very clear in this time of crisis. Everyone seeks the leader in a time of crisis, and it's Egypt. Indeed. Indeed, we've been exerting, we're, of course, our leadership along with uh, uh, yes. Egypt institutions have been exerting their utmost effort in order to be able mm -hmm. to help uh, or give the help that everybody needs. Or but returning back to what we were speaking about and the meeting of uh, today and important uh, events that are organized mm. during this meeting would be uh, or would be including this important business forum for the private sector which is one important issue the president has been speaking about uh, private uh, sector and their importance and contribution and other related to preparations for cop 27 mm. green economy sustainable growth climate change and definitely other pressing issues. Uh, reading into the uh, agenda of this meeting, mm. how important is 
each and every topic that are being uh, uh, included in the agenda of, its, uh, of the work of these meetings from the 1st till the 4th of uh, uh, June. Well, uh, the main issue is uh, cooperation. We have to increase the cooperation between uh, uh, these countries. Uh, we have to work together because we, have, we are seeing now the world map economically is being reshaped. Everything will change in the coming months. Indeed. It's already changing now. I think that the source of the energy, the source of uh, uh, the, the grains, uh, the source of uh, agriculture things, it's all going to change now. I think that um, uh, the time of uh, one power, one world power, has, is, is, is almost over now. So emerging countries like Egypt, uh, and uh, other countries in several regions have to cooperate. So I think that these were the main topics. We have to cooperate economically. We have to work together. We cannot be dependent on one force in the world. We have to work and have our own uh, cooperation. That's, we started by giving this example by working with our brothers in Africa. We are working with our brothers in the Gulf also. So we are trying to have broader communication, broader cooperation on several levels, on banking levels, on investment levels. Um, I think that, for, for instance, the war and the, 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 the conflict that we are witnessing today, it's, it's all the, the, the pressure, it's not only the artillery, it's also money. It's also the gas, it's also uh, the, the oil, it's also the agriculture. And I think that uh, Egypt is now uh, it's attracting also our partners in, 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 uh, in Europe because they know that this is a strong country who has sovereign decision. That's why they, 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 are, they are coming to Cairo to talk to President Sisi because they know that the time is over when uh, Egypt will be alienated to some power against the other. No, they have to n negotiate with us. They have to offer things that will be in our interest. Uh, so mutual interest, respect. Mutual uh, our, interest, our, of course. Or build our relations so of mutual interest. Yes. The world is changing. So I think this is the main topic that we're telling all these countries, if we work together, we will be a strong bl block. And I think that um, this is uh, what many countries, even the superpower countries, uh, wish to, s to see, uh, especially in Russia, they said, well, we would not see one policeman for the world, we want several powers. And so I think that we are working in this in cooperation with the superpowers also. That uh, was illustrated by the Prime Minister today, in which he um, uh, spoke about Egypt's uh, vision on uh, cooperation among member states mm -hmm. of uh, the Islamic Development Bank. Uh, here uh, uh, we have to speak about uh, some of the projects that were implemented by the bank so we mm -hmm. can understand uh, 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 its value or, or, or its uh, capability. Uh, we're speaking about a bank that has funded 362 projects in just in Egypt in the, the sectors of manufacturing, mining, energy, finance, agriculture, education, healthcare, water mm. supply, mm -hmm. uh, waste, water, housing, telecommunications, information technology, and transport, among mm. others. Mm. Uh, here, Egypt has put a kind of vision towards what should be a strategy for cooperation among the member states of this group or this uh, uh, bank. From your point of view, how could the bank or the group mm. work on pressing issues pertaining the uh, Islamic world or let me here speak about Africa and the Middle East? In particular, as I said from the beginning, we're not separate from the surroundings. We're not separate from the international community. 
So we are affected now. It's not uh, uh, only now that, that what we're witnessing is the whole planet being involved in, in, the, 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 in the remapping and reach and re the change. It's not only the Islamic world or Africa or the Arab world or the Middle East. It's all the nations. So I think that uh, we, we are, it's very smart that we are targeting now the, the steps working with the Africans, then working with the Arab world, then working with the, African, the, the Islamic world, then working with uh, a broader cooperation with everyone. I think that um, we are trying, we, when we say the Islamic or the Arab world, that means an economy, means the oil, means the gas. And, and that's very, very interesting now for every power in the world now. We are seeing now how Saudi Arabia, how our brothers in the Emirates are trying to maintain um, a relationship. Yesterday they had this uh, summit, the Gulf summit with uh, Sergei Lavrov, Lavrov oh. Prime Minister, uh, Foreign Minister of Russia. So they were working with uh, several and they're cooperating also with the Americans. So I think it's very delicate now how we will organize these strategies so that, that our economies will be protected and in the same time we will be attracting all the investment from outside. We do not wish to lose a side for the others. Um, if we are, for example, uh, having uh, historical, profound, uh, excellent relations with our uh, allies and, 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 and friends in, in Russia, we are also having good relations with our partners in Europe. And the president of Poland was in Egypt. And I think President Sisi has the charismatic leadership of showing everyone that we could listen and we have the vision. And that's why Egypt is stressing all the time a peaceful solution for the conflicts. Uh, and the fact that everyone is coming to Egypt, that means that we are an interesting place, interesting market, interesting agriculture uh, environment for other countries in these times of crisis. And in time of crisis, I think everyone, uh, uh, every country searches for the strong. And I mean the strong, strong partner. I think Indeed. when I mean the strong, I mean strong on every level, on every level. And this is what we are showing the world today. And we're showing to the Egyptian people first that we are, we are regaining again uh, our position and we're showing Europe and our friends that we are strong. Mm. Since you brought this issue, let me here say that uh, Egypt was one of the first countries to put a national strategy for sustainable development. Mm -hmm. um, how do you view Egypt uh, or how the world see Egypt as a role model uh, for countries putting their strategies for sustainable development and, and this is our topic tonight also, transformation into green energy. This is a very uh, interesting subject because we are seeing the will of the international community to go into the green energy. But still, many superpowers and many economic powers are not really um, uh, comfortable with the idea because it will harm their economies. So uh, we have two obstacles. We have the first obstacle that it costs a lot of money. And the second obstacle is that uh, we are trying not to harm our uh, friends' economies uh, and brothers' economies, in, in like, like the Gulf states, which are uh, producers of oil, for example. So uh, I think that the green economy is something that will take time to implement. But we are showing the world that we are capable of maintaining both. We, ha we are gas and oil producer, and also we are heading to the green economy, so that any investor would come to Egypt if, their, if his country is trying to uh, uh, put, push the economy towards the green energy, Egypt is the suitable market. If it's still on the oil and the gas, Egypt is the, the perfect uh, environment also. So we are trying to maintain the balance between both. Uh, and this also puts Egypt in a good level in the eyes of the United Nations, who is working very hard on this project. So I think that we are telling them, 
we are a very good candid candidate for these kind of projects. We are endorsing this. The government here is working on this uh, green economy, but still it will take time and money and we have to be patient. Actually, we're, yes, indeed, we are working um, in, in balance to all, uh, the, um, to all the interests of all countries, but even the Gulf uh, uh, states are working themselves for uh, uh, trying to diversify their economy, mm. not to be only uh, uh, oil dependent mm. countries. So we are also working in favor yes. uh, of our uh, uh, common interests. Before we move on with our uh, discussion, let me hear first uh, this first report and uh, Foreign uh, Minister uh, Sema Shokri was in uh, Stockholm, the capital of Sweden, uh, for the sixth ministerial meeting on climate action. Let's watch. Foreign Minister Sameh Shukri and President-designate of the 2022 UN Climate Change Conference, COP27, called for urgent action to implement climate pledges and the Paris Agreement while addressing the sixth ministerial meeting on climate change, MOCA, in Sweden. Shukri underscored the necessity of continuing efforts to boost international climate work, especially that of adapting to climate change and reducing emissions. During the market session, entitled Determining Track of International Climate Work in 2022, the COP27 president-designate called for looking into the potential harms from climate change and providing finance for climate issues. Earlier in May, Egypt co-organized a ministerial meeting with Denmark and the United Kingdom in Copenhagen on the implementation of the climate pledges. Foreign Ministry spokesman Ambassador Ahmad Hafiz said in a statement that the meeting emphasized the political will of the various parties to focus on transforming climate pledges into actions. Egypt will host COP27 in the Red Sea city of Sharm el-Sheikh on the 7th till the 8th of November. The top diplomat pointed out that Egypt seeks, through its presidency of the COP27, to build on the outcomes of COP26 held in Glasgow last year with the aim of achieving more progress in all aspects of climate work. He added that Egypt is keen to communicate effectively with all parties concerned with climate action, including governments, the private sector, financial institutions, civil society, and scientific and academic circles. The MOCA, an annual meeting co-hosted by Canada, the EU, and China, kicked off on Tuesday with the attendance of several ministers and high-level representatives from over 30 countries, including ministers from the G20, and chairs of key party groupings in the UN climate negotiations. The meetings provide a space for discussions on the implementation of the Paris Agreement through the promotion of ambitious climate action and the successful adoption of technical rules under the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, UNFCCC. Also on Tuesday, Shukri held talks with Vice President of the European Commission, EC, Franz Timmermans, on the sidelines of the meeting. Earlier in the day, Shukri also met with Canadian Minister of Environment and Climate Change, Stephen Gulbert, and his Swedish counterpart, Anne Lind, where they discussed boosting bilateral relations between Egypt and Sweden, especially economic relations. Right, welcome back. And uh, um, here we are turning to our next uh, uh, topic, which is which was also relevant to what we were speaking about. Uh, Foreign Minister Sema Shokri has attended the sixth ministerial uh, meeting on climate uh, action in Sweden, where he called for urgent uh, climate change actions from the international community. Uh, uh, to highlight the issue we have with us over the phone. Dr. Magdia Lam, uh, expert 
uh, in, or rather international expert in environment. Uh, good evening to you, sir. You're welcome. Okay, thank you so much. And uh, let me here ask you about this six uh, ministerial uh, meeting on climate change uh, in Sweden and uh, the urgent call that the foreign minister has been speaking about and addressing in many of the international forums preparing for uh, Egypt hosting this upcoming uh, COP27. The Egyptian government uh, already issued the uh, national strategy of climate change resilience and adaptation and responding to the five uh, items, the main items of the climate action requested by the uh, Secretary, the International Secretary of the uh, Convention of Climate Change. And actually, uh, the Minister of the Foreign Affairs is highlighting the major five uh, lines of policies of Egypt to deal with the climate uh, uh, and change uh, which we can, as an expert, say that we are in the way to have a climate shift in order the, the climate change because of the increasing of the greenhouse gases and the continuation of the fossil fuel uh, burning in the industry and in energy uh, uh, generation and actually even in agriculture sector and transport sector and then the uh, housing sector and the sixth one is the tourism sector. Those are the six sectors of the GHG emissions and the six sectors of the uh, recommended adaptation policies and the easiest to declare the already uh, its policy national strategy of dealing with the climate resilience action. And this national strategy is covering all the, all the recommendations of the Convention of the Climate Change. And mainly of the, uh, actually the climate resilience uh, plan, which is uh, uh, and requesting a, a very high cost uh, price because we are looking up to uh, one uh, yeah, uh, trillion dollars to cover the needs of the water uh, saving and the shift for uh, crops uh, adapted for the uh, agriculture, especially for the wheat and the maize and uh, the food security, which is the main challenge of the climate change nowadays facing the developing countries. And then transformation from uh, what's called traditional energy, like uh, fossil fuel and uh, other uh, uh, yeah, sources of uh, petrol or petrochemicals. So now we are shifting to the solar energy and the green hydrogen and the blue hydrogen. And actually, we are looking for uh, more renewable energy sources rather than the conventional sources of energy to cover the gap of the development. As you know, the uh, ARE, the Arab Republic of Egypt, its all emissions may be maximum up to six, uh, a point of uh, one, I mean six to a point only of the emissions and the total continent of Africa, including the Arab state, is uh, totally four percent share of the uh, GHG generations all over the world in comparison with the United States, China, India, the 20 industrialized uh, states who are responsible for more than 85% of the total GHG all over the world. And the continent of Africa is the most poor continent, but unfortunately the only clean co continent which is the mitigation area for such uh, overloaded uh, greenhouse gases and air pollution is Africa continent. And if you are following the satellite, which actually surveying the atmosphere and the uh, six layers of the climate, uh, I mean, for the climate itself, uh, we are, uh, because you know that we are uh, working on the, uh, yeah, the climate uh, area 
up to 10,000 kilometers over the Earth's crust. So we are dealing with seven layers of uh, the uh, greenhouse and unfortunately the second of the uh, greenhouse gases of uh, burning and uh, of the fossil soil. Yes. The main, source, the main source of the climate change and will be the main source to increase the temperature of the surface of the Earth. Yes, indeed. Up it, it, to 1.5 degrees centigrade for the surface of the Earth, which and which will induce a lot of negative impacts on the climate change. Particularly and, uh, in Africa. Indeed, particularly in Africa and uh, uh, the Arab region, or particularly Africa, which will be uh, uh, heavily. Uh, affected by the climate uh, change and this is yes a hope that we are all uh, hoping uh, for the uh, uh, decrease uh, uh, by 1.5 if we can do more it is even much better dr magdi alam uh, expert in uh, or international expert in environment we thank you so much for being with us and for your input and indeed uh, that was what uh, the foreign minister has been expressing since he's the president designate of the cop 27 preparing for uh, egypt hosting this upcoming important conference and since egypt was one of the first countries that has been warning highly of the climate impact uh, on uh, the world before we move on uh, to our uh, discussion with uh, Dr. Uh, Sharif. Let me here take this uh, report and uh, uh, Foreign Minister Samah Shukri reviews Egypt's vision for COP27 in the World Economic Forum session. Let's watch. Foreign Minister Samah Shukri reviewed the country's vision regarding the UN Climate Change Conference COP27, which Egypt will host in a session held within the framework of the World Economic Forum, WEF, in Davis, Switzerland. The session comes under the title The Road to the 27th Session of the Conference of the Parties COP27 to the UNF. CCC partnerships between the public and private sectors in climate action in the Middle East and North Africa. Shokri, President Designate of the COP27, participated in the 2022 annual meeting of the WEF in Davis, where he is scheduled to discuss COP27. The top diplomat is scheduled to meet with a number of senior officials from various countries and parties participating in the forum on the sidelines of its activities to consult on the ongoing work to prepare for COP27 that would be held in the Egyptian city of Sharm el-Sheikh on November 7th till the 18th. Shukri also would discuss ways of cooperation to enhance international climate action at various levels, especially with regard to adaptation measures and mitigating climate change's negative repercussions, in addition to providing climate finance and implementing climate pledges. On the sidelines of the meeting, Shukri also met with Chief Executive Officer of Boston Consulting Group Christoph Schwieser, a COP27 partner, where they discussed means of mobilizing climate finance and the role of the private sector on the international climate action. Egypt launched the National Strategy for Climate Change 2050 to improve the citizens' quality of life and sustainable economic growth and preserve its natural resources. Prime Minister Dr. Mustafa Madbouli announced that the national strategy for adapting to the climate change impacts has been prepared to lay down a general framework to identify problems in all affected sectors and then to enhance how the society can cope with risks and their impact on various sectors. Right, welcome back. And um, as we have been speaking here with uh, Dr. Magdi Alam, uh, Foreign Minister Samah Shokri was just in Sweden to attend the sixth ministerial meeting on the climate change uh, action. Uh, Foreign Minister Samah Shokri has also attended many of the international forums in 
conferences on this issue pertaining the climate change mm. action or what is needed from the world in order to be able to confront mm. the climate uh, uh, change uh, impacts and how we are trying to mitigate mm. uh, the implications of them or, or, or rather mitigate what we can defend ourselves uh, with. Now, definitely Egypt is <laughs> not, uh, and, and the African continent at large are not the reason behind mm. the climate uh, change, but they will be paying the price. Let me see here, um, how do you view uh, the Foreign Minister call for urgent uh, climate change action from uh, the world? And, what, uh, and how do you read Egypt's vision towards this very particular aspect? Well, as you just said, we're not the reason for this climate change and we are paying the price. And I start from here. Um, it will be very unfair that those who provoked during the industrial era all this destruction of environment that they will come and ask us to respect the environment we the countries who were trying to deal with sovereignty problems for decades and now we are able capable of many maintaining our man industries and uh, self-sufficient uh, uh, capacities that we will be asked to respect some codes that will hinder our efforts for the, the economies i mean by that yes we are respecting the environment but we also have to build our manufacturers we have to build our factories in cooperation with these countries if they want to help because it will cost money do you think there is there is an if in 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 in, in this case we're speaking about fundamental problems mm. climate change problems that will mm. occur mm -hmm. and we're not just speaking about uh, 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 things that would uh, reflect just on, on us, but mm -hmm. on the whole, whole world mm -hmm. now. So there is no if, in, 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 if they want to help. Mm -hmm. Now it's become, <coughs> uh, they must. So what we have been calling, or Egypt's vision, towards an urgent climate change uh, action, mm -hmm. How do you view the Egyptian vision? How do you view how Egypt is uh, uh, trying to uh, consolidate efforts in this uh, domain? Well, let's be very clear and answering is about the question and if, and we are living in a world that every day it changes, facts, facts are changing. So I mean that Egypt's view now, if the world wants really to be serious about this topic, they have to help uh, in, in, with all their power. I mean, the powerful countries will have to invest and come to countries like Egypt, like African countries, and invest in this green energy, in this green in the industrial uh, era. So we will be helping each other. We cannot afford having all the burden on ourselves. This would be unfair. And this is what the UN is saying years ago. It has to be, uh, the, the responsibility is everyone's responsibility. As you just said, it's not an if question. It's a matter of human uh, future. Hmm. We have to be working together. So Egypt is calling for cooperation, monetary cooperation, expertise and also uh, diplomatic cooperation. We cannot put uh, the fact that the planet is being uh, uh, threatened by this climate change in the hands of interest, geopolitical interest, uh, wars. We have to put it as a priority and then everything, everything comes next. And I hope and I are really uh, uh, trying to be optimistic. They will listen to Egypt's voice about this matter. 
as Egypt is working on the diplomatic front, it's also working on the ground. Mm -hmm. And I mean he, here that Egypt has already announced its national strategy for adopting to climate uh, change uh, impact uh, uh, and has already uh, worked on turning into green or green transformation. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you view the uh, steps that were taken uh, uh, in Egypt in this domain and briefly because I just have two minutes left. Well, uh, it all depends now on uh, the strength of relationship that we have with these countries who have the expertise. And I think that we are working on a very good level with our European partners on that also. And I think that uh, many companies uh, working with Egypt now on the transportation, for example, from Germany and other countries, are working with us in this kind of uh, investment that preserving uh, this uh, the climate, uh, uh, the respect of the environment. So I think that uh, we are offering many zones like the the Al Alamein zone, or also in the Suez Canal places that we are telling the world this is it could be a clean energy uh, uh, hub you can work there so um, Egypt is preparing the ground infrastructure to gather all the willing forces to work with us on this climate uh, uh, change uh, uh, event yes. but I think that it will take also time till some issues would be resolved on the international arena indeed Indeed. Unfortunately, my time is out and I have to end it here. Dr. Shreef Amir, Professor of International Relations, we thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thank you. For me. And uh, that takes us to the end of this episode. Next debate would be on Sunday with other important topics. Until Sunday, it's good night. <laughs>